I am going to tell you a few very useful things, especially to all the second time AI PGD takers and we are starting right now. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Tahar Khan. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I share with you clinic and exam related productivity tips and strategies. If this is your first time here, start now by subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss anything. So the date for the AI PGT 2021 has been declared, which is 18th of September. But in a more recent notice by NTA, I have seen that in the column of date of the exam, they have mentioned that it will be notified later. So if you are confused whether the exam will get postponed or not, to that I think that the exam might get postponed but even if that happens it will be for a few weeks only at the most a maximum of two weeks that I can guess not more than that and I would strongly recommend that prepare yourself to appear in the exam on the 18th and just in case the exam gets postponed then you would get few weeks for revision which would be a win-win for you so nevertheless whenever is your exam there are many of you who will be appearing in this exam for the second time Last year, you appeared in the test, but because of some reason, you couldn't get admission into the college of your choice and decided to appear again this year. From disappointment of not being able to crack it earlier to extreme anxiety of making it through this time makes the entire preparation process nerve-wracking, especially when you have devoted one entire year solely for this purpose. And it's very difficult to go through the entire process all over again because you begin to doubt your decisions, your learning abilities and your confidence. But just remember, you can neither lose hope nor sight of your goal. So in this video, I am going to be addressing specifically to this category of students and tell you a few points that you must keep in mind this year. And of course, the first timers can watch it as well. So the first point is prepare to attempt all the questions. In my previous videos, I had discussed how many questions you need to attempt, how many questions you can take risks with that you should attempt around 70% and not take much risk beyond that and these kind of things. But if you are a second time test taker, then prepare yourself to attempt all the questions that is lying in front of you. There is no 70-75% for you. You must be able to answer all the questions in the test. You have been preparing for two years. You are experienced, in fact, more experienced than anyone in the room or your center. So utilize that experience. You might even be able to answer the rare questions because these rare questions are not so rare to you. Because you have an increased risk-taking appetite, which the freshers lack, and that is where you are gonna excel. Consider that the rare questions will not be attempted by most of these students, or even if attempted, most of them will get it wrong, but not you because you have seen this rare question a number of times in the past and you know you can get it correct. And this is where you are throwing yourself far ahead of all your competitors. Remember in one of my previous videos, I had talked about the three waves of attempt, what you are doing in the first wave, what you are doing in the second wave, and there is no third wave because you are doing nothing in the third wave. Well, that was for the freshers. You people will be taking the third wave. You people will be attempting questions in the third wave. Third wave is very risky, but you have the appetite and experience to face it. And naturally, if you are doing so, you are able to attempt much more number of questions, which would ultimately get you a better rank. So that was point number one. Utilize your experience and prepare to answer even the rare questions in the exam. Point number two, know when to hold back. What happens with all these students who are taking this exam for the first time is that we get these intuitions. Ke I think this is the correct option. Or, lag raha hai ki yahi answer hai. Pakka pakka. Kahi to pade hai. I can't remember where, but I am almost sure that this is the correct answer. And what happens in the process is that we end up attempting a lot of these kind of questions. The answer to which we are not sure of. We think that we are marking the correct answer. Whereas most of our answers ultimately end up being incorrect. And what happens is that we end up getting a lot of negative markings which pull down our rank even further. But you, attempting the exam for the second time, you are past all these intuition feelings. You know which questions you need to attempt and which not to. Because you have given so many tests until now, you know from your past experience what feelings you get inside the exam hall and more importantly, how to control it. So it is easier for you to get in control of your intuitions and make a more calculated choice, leading to less negative mark and ultimately improving your rank. So that was point number two, know when to stop. Point number three, you are good with calculations. 
inside the exam hall apart from attempting the papers there are a lot of calculations that you are required to make and you being much experienced can make these calculations very accurately things like you need to judge the standard of paper lying in front of you what will be the cut off for this paper what will be the toppers percentage on this paper how much you need to score to crack this exam how many risky questions you can attempt how many flukes you can use not making any silly mistakes also how to manage time so that you don't undergo stress at the end due to lack of time all of these things require experience which you have more than anyone on that day so trust your calculation point number 4 attempt more questions from materia medica and also medicine see materia medica and medicine are the type of subjects which are least scoring i am not going to go into why but they are so naturally students are not able to score high in these subjects because they are not able to answer much mcqs from here and even if they do chances of getting it wrong is also high so these subjects incur most of the negative marks but not for you this is not your first attempt you need to score high in these difficult subjects so try to attempt more questions from materia medica 20 to 25 questions are asked from materia and you should be able to answer every question number 5 is the pareto principle those of you who have been watching my videos regularly know what pareto principle is because i have talked on this principle in the past if you want to know in details you can do that by watching this video i will also put the link of that video down in the description below but in short this principle is the 20 80 rule means that the 20% of the efforts will give you 80% of results or in our field 80% of your income comes from the 20% of the diseases you treat or if you say in terms of exam then 80% of the questions will be asked from 20% of the topic so you already know what you need to do you need to identify those 20% and study them very well that's all but here's the catch it's not easy to identify those 20% it requires experience and that is what you have an advantage of all this time you have attempted so many tests so many mocks you know what are the topics from where questions are bound to get picked you also know the topics that are not important for the exam and not worth your time focusing on these 20% will get you maximum result so make sure you are studying smartly and efficiently so these were few of the things all of you the second time aipgd takers must be doing to boost your score and get the best possible rank this time if you want to add anything feel free to use the comment section let me know how you like the video give it a thumbs up if you like it share it with your friends and i'll see you in the next